In this segment, I want to get into Wii RAM hacking. Now, I've covered the USB Gecko in previous segments. If this is the first time you're hearing about it, it is a device that was created for the GameCube and the Wii that plugs into the memory card slot and allows you to have a USB interface to do uh, various debugging and development features. It's really great for homebrew, and if you have a real interest in any of the uh, GameCube or Wii homebrew, I'd highly suggest getting one. Now, before we even begin, we have to have a, a slight understanding of the inner workings of the Wii. The Wii itself has 88 megabytes of memory. Only 24 of those megs we're really interested in. Uh, the Wii does partition the, the memory into a MEM1 and MEM2 range. I'll put some links in the show notes that explain the memory ranges of the actual Wii itself. I'm not going to get into it today. But you have to understand that there are certain ranges of addresses that if you poke at it, it'll instantly crash the Wii. Reason being is that the Wii does have encrypted parts of RAM. There are two main CPUs inside the Wii itself. You have the Starlet, which when you first power up the Wii, it sets up all of the communication, the encryption, uh, it sets up the controllers, it sets up the entire environment, and then makes sure that everything is a secure session, everything is uh, encrypted throughout the ass and back again. And it puts itself into small ranges of memory. Now, uh, once everything is uh, authenticated and secured, uh, hands control over to the Hollywood CPU, and the Hollywood CPU will execute the code and let you play your game or your homebrew. Now, the problem with this is, if we actually read or, or write to any of the contents of RAM that the Starlet's execution code is in, or is residing in, or any encrypted RAM for that matter, it'll instantly lock up the game. Also, you can peek into not only the actual RAM for the system RAM, but you can also poke into the graphics RAM, so sometimes you, a game might be using system RAM to hold graphics data, and just by reading it, causing that lag, when you dump the data, it's going to crash the system. So, when you first get started, do a lot of research on the USB Gecko forums. There's a whole community of RAM hacking people behind this, and they've got a lot of great information already out there. I'm going to link to them. I'll put it in the show notes. Now, um, before we even get into the actual console side, we have to understand object-oriented programming languages. Now, typically with NES hacking, the game itself actually resides on a flash cartridge. Everything is all in that one area. And we always know that the RAM addresses are always going to be the equal, no matter what, no matter whenever we load a stage or wherever it's going to be, everything's on that media. But today, games are held on CDs or DVDs. There's no way to put like a 700 meg CD in the contents of only 88 megabytes of RAM. So when we have a 3D game, it's what we call an object-oriented language, meaning everything in the entire game is considered an object. Like an example, let's say that my entire room here is a computer simulation. My remote control is coded and compiled as one object. Uh, you know, my laptop here is one object. I am an object. The camera is an object. The tripod stand, an object. My tables, they're objects. Those objects will load into memory and in those objects themselves will contain actual memory locations. Now, when the game's loading things in the, in the memory, today we're going to focus on Super Mario Galaxy for obvious reasons, and I'll, I'll explain it a little bit. Now, when the game is actually loading in the memory, the first thing that should load is the stage. So, sometimes the stage could be 5 megs, maybe it could be 10, maybe it could be 50. You don't know until it loads. So, when Mario finally, which is going to be the obvious character you want to have your attributes for, when Mario loads into that level, is the memory addresses in which his health and his lives and star bits and coins will never be in the same location twice. This is an obvious thing for any object-oriented language, because when things load into memory, it goes first in, first out, or what's called FIFO. And the FIFO buff buffer basically means is the first thing that goes into the RAM is the first thing that comes out of the RAM. So the first thing that goes into the RAM is going to be the level. So if the level takes up, say, 10 megs of space, and then Mario takes up, at, as, an, as an object, takes up 1 meg, he's going to be at the 11 megabyte mark. But what happens if your level takes up 15 megs? Mario will start at the 15 meg limit and take up 1 meg. Argument's sake, I'm just trying to make this easy. So this is where pointers come in. Now, the first thing that really loads to RAM is what, so what's called a pointer list. So think of it like this. If, if a game is compiled as an object, and each object is like a book, perhaps, where there are chapters, you might not know where those chapters are unless you manually look through. But, if you look at the index of the book, it'll tell you where all of the chapters start on what page numbers. That's what a pointer is. The pointers are an actual list of wh where the actual object will reside in RAM, and where in that object file, in a memory offset, 
where to actually find specific values like health, coins, uh, what power-ups you have, what and a whole bunch of stuff. So typically with the NES RAM hacking I've done like 20 something segments ago, uh, we just basically would dump the RAM and we'd compare and contrast and we'd look for different value, uh, differences in values like you know more than, less than, equal to, not equal to, specific values and such. So go back to those segments and check out the basic techniques for RAM hacking. Those will be applicable to this. Today, I'm going to get a little bit more in-depth. I'm going to automatically understand that you have a clear understanding of binary, hexadecimal, as well as the decimal uh, numbering systems, 8, 16, and 32-bit uh, uh, string formats and variable formats. I'm automatically going to assume that you know the basic concepts of how to dump the RAM, use a utility to compare two sets of RAM to find the differences to find the addresses you're looking for. All of that I'm going to assume you already know. If you don't, hit previous episodes. I'll put links in the show notes on basic concepts of that. So we're going to go and load up Mario Galaxy and the, uh, and the Gecko OS, and we're going to get to the PC side and get to a brief tutorial on how to start Wii RAM hacking using Super Mario Galaxy. Go ahead and load Gecko OS by way of choice. I plan on using the uh, Wii Homebrew channel and launch the weird graphical user interface. It'll automatically launch the game. So, brief overview of what you're seeing in front of you. The interface has the uh, next step and run button. Once the game actually loads, you can either hit next to go and increment one CPU cycle or you hit run to resume the actual game itself. If at any time you need to pause the game because you're in heavy action or just whatever reason needs some time to think, you can go ahead hit the pause button. Uh, top left we have the memory ranges that we're allowed to play in, which I'll put some links in the show notes about. And it also automatically fills in the start and end addresses that are safely allowed to actually play in. Now we can actually do a search of a value type of an unknown value using you know the particular uh, equal, not equal, less than, less than or equal, you know, the, the typical, um, you know, compare types, or we can actually load, uh, we, we can search for specific values of either 8, 16, or 32-bit values. Later on, we'll be using the pointer search, the memory viewer, as well as the GCT codes, but we'll get into those when the time comes. Go ahead and load up Mario Galaxy and get to the uh, primary uh, observatory place, and uh, if you notice on, on the screen, I have 9,852 star bits, so we're going to go and s start searching for things. So, we're going to search for a 32-bit value of 9,852. Now, of course, this is in decimal, and we want to work in hex, so we hit the convert uh, decimal to hex button, and it'll convert it to 267C. We're going to go ahead and start. It'll take about 45 seconds to dump 24 megs of data, and the Wii is going to lock up, it's going to freeze and make a horrible bunch of noise, so mute your TV and then just bear with us. Alright, the search is done, and we are left with only six codes, which is pretty good. Every, every once in a while you'll have a couple of uh, tens of thousands. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to use two star bits, and we are going to put in the number in decimal, 9,850. We're going to convert that to hexadecimal, and we're going to search again. Okay, we're only down to one address, so when you get down to a couple of addresses, it's time to do some nitty-gritty poking around. You can right-click the address, and then manually hit poke. Later on, we'll be using the memory viewer, pointer 1 and pointer 2, but for now, we're going to poke. And if you'll notice, it's at the previous value of 267C, so we're going to go ahead and poke it. And there we go, it actually goes up. Bring it back down to A. There it goes. Fine and dandy. It goes to show that uh, now you can poke this specific memory address as a 32-bit value. So now that we can go to the GCT codes, we're going to make a new code. And we're going to name this code, if it lets me rename it, Starbits. And going to the US Echo's website, they actually have an in-detail tutorial on how to use, uh, or actually an explanation, I should say. It's not much of a tutorial on different memory ranges, base addresses, pointers, registers, such and such and such. So, right now we're actually interested in locking a 32-bit 
uh, a 32-bit value at an address, at a base address. So, let's see, this is 16, no, we want 32. So, alright, so our prefix is going to be 04, which means the write 32 bits into the RAM of the base address. Alright, so we'll go back to the weird graphical interface, and I've actually already put together this code. Where did it go? I do believe it's this one. Give me one second. I'm just trying to copy and paste here. Here we go. Let me make sure that these are proper addresses. F6, 3C, F4, 36, and you're alright. Alright, so 04 is the prefix saying, as, uh, as stated, 04 is 32-bit RAM write at the base address, and we found the base address quite easily. And the base address being F6, 3C, F4, and we want to lock it to the value 27. 0F, which should constitute as 9,999. Uh, 9, so we're going to add the code to the star bits, and then we're going to enable it. Hit enable, and we're going to apply the codes. And there we go. Our first code. It's going to lock the star bits to 9,999. So once this is done filling up, I'll actually show. There we go. Doesn't matter how many you use, it's this code is going to automatically lock this base address and fill it with a 32-bit value nine, decimal 9999 or hexadecimal 270F. So this is our first basic search. Alright, all fine and dandy, now we know how to find base addresses, but what about these elusive pointers that I was talking about? So we're just gonna go ahead and fly to any random galaxy that we can start doing searches on pointers. Now, to get a pointer, we're gonna have to load up two separate worlds, and we're gonna have to find the same, uh, a different address for the same thing. So the easiest thing to look for is health. So we're gonna go ahead and restart everything, reset all of the values, and we're gonna start on Mario's health, and we want a 32-bit value for decimal 3, 32-bit 3, because we know he has 3 health right now. Now, we're going to go ahead and do a quick search. Alright, so we're down to 5,707, and that's a bit, so we're going to lose a bit of health, and you can use the typical compares of equal, not equal, greater than, less than, but we know the value is at 2, so we're going to search again for 2. Alright, we're now down to 6, but I'm a stingy bastard, so let's try to get this down to a few less. Reduce the health by one, and search again. Now that's more like it, we're down to two addresses. Now we're going to go ahead and poke. We'll poke this first address, and every time we poke it we notice that the life meter on the screen just jiggles, so that's obviously not it. We'll poke the other address. And we've got it. And we'll make this three, bring Mario's health back up to three. Verified that this that this, ad this, this address for this world is Mario's health. But if we change worlds because of the way object-oriented programming works, it won't be the same for another world. So we need to find the pointer. So we're going to enter this address into pointer search 1. And if you... you go, sorry, let me narrate. You right-click, and you go to pointer 1, and go to the pointer search, and you'll notice that it'll enter in address 1. Then go to the memory dump, and do one memory dump for this stage. Alright, once the memory dump is done, I've noticed a small problem with the weird interface. You actually have to go and click File 1, and manually point it to the actual dump 180.bin. Now, we've manually found the address for Mario's health for this level, and we've entered that address into the pointer search. Now we we'll have to go off to another level, so we can find the alternate address for another world so we can compare these two different files for pointers.